Yo, welcome back. Today we are going to be fitting a Valiant air source heat pump and it's something new for me really, but it's not rocket science. It's literally a 6mm H07 feed from a new little consumer unit I'm installing with surge protection as it's quite an expensive device and obviously you want to protect it. And then we're going to a rotary isolator on the outside here. John, the plumber in the background, is currently plumbing it all up. This is where it's getting mounted. John's working all his magic with pipes, which I know absolutely zero about, but let's just pretend to do it all looks pretty nice obviously it's still a work in progress so if anyone's typing away in the comments don't shout at john too much because he's not done yet um but first job for me before we lift this absolute beautiful unit very heavy unit that's why john got me here onto this uh mounting system here we've got to fix this conduit so what we're going to be doing is going down and then new bit of conduit along and then back up to there behind there so it is all nice and neat and tidy out the way ready for the customer and that used to be on an oil bond which is there but that's getting all capped off so i've got two new end boxes some conduit two elbows and i've got all the tools out of the van pulled out the earth wire out the fuse board obviously I isolated the supply before removing supplementary blonding um or main protected bonding what you want to call it um yeah, so now let's you just rip all this conduit off and start from scratch. Um, should be a nice, simple job. So let's get that done, and then we'll get onto the exciting bit, which is showing you wiring up this air source heat pump. Sorry, I've not recorded anything, but I've got the cable through, linear and clip that down. It's all nice and neat. The only thing is, this cable obviously HO7 is very flexible, so I think once the sun gets on it a bit, I've tried to strain it out as best as possible, um, and then it's going to loop straight into this rotary isolator. Has to be a minimum of 200 away, which it is. It's going to be perfect. And then we've got a nice rotary isolator here um, and then it's going to be looping up into that and then out of the bottom into the SOS heat pump. Sorry for the wind. It is windy, rainy and horrible today. So we picked a great day for it. I've siliconed up that hole there, ran my finger around it, cleaned it off, cleaned the cable. So now we're good to uh, terminate this cable into the stuffing gland using some ferrules as it is stranded cable. So. I will get some ferrules on that and run you through the process. I'm just gonna run and grab like a Nipex Ergo strip style thing to strip the outer sheathing off of this. And then we'll look at wiring this in and then obviously speak to John about lifting this massive unit here onto there or potentially wiring it up first and then lifting it on. I'm not too sure how he's gotta go with the pipes. Is that conduit all done as well? I forgot to say that, it's all done. I just need to give this all a wipe now as the brick dust has been blown absolutely everywhere because it's right hooly down this little alleyway. We're getting there, it's all clipped down there. It's clipped down here, clipped along, ready to be wired up. Um, I'll just give everyone a bit of a clean up. Conduit's nice and clean. Cable's nice and clean. This is ready to be wired up. Put a bit of silicon over the screws to the back. I never really like to use those holes there. I just need to clean in there as well, but it's a bit awkward to clean. So next, I've got to speak to John and try and lift this 120 kilo unit onto here. He's got to try and plumb it up, I believe, and then I've got to wire it in as well at the same time. We've ran through the bus cable as well. So that's ready to go. And now it's just a case of looking at all the manuals and seeing exactly where we wire what. All right, sorry I've not got any more footage. We've been absolutely wrestling this heavy 120 kilogram unit onto the mounting system. It's all mounted, it's bolted, it's secure. Um, I've wired up the rotary isolator, so that's all ready to go. And now before I connect up the bus cable, which is the two core communication cable to the interface, I don't know 100% on that. I've still got to read the book on that connecting that side, but obviously we're going to sort out the power to it first. John's connected up his two pipes, um, but I've just split the end here and obviously we've got a bit of excess slack, but I'd rather do my insulation resistance test now and then before it's even connected to this unit for potentially damaging it. So I'm going to carry out insulation resistance test and obviously uh, R1, R2. Uh, and then I'll redo those uh, R1 or 2 figure test when it's actually connected because it's going to shrink so the uh, it should be a lower reading as there's less resistance. But overall, I'm really happy with the install so far. It's looking good and the unit looks really smart on the wall there. So I've got the Mega out, I've got it on IR, I've stripped the end ready, I've made sure that the end isn't touching inside of there. So you can see it's stripped off. And it's ready to go i'm the only one in this property apart from john so there's no one going to be touching it so i'm happy to carry out a quick ir whilst i'm here and i can see the cable there put the tester on 500 volts so it's locked on because i need to film with the other hand so we'll crocodile clip on the live and then we'll start with the neutral if i can get it off the floor with my crocodile clip so 9999 that's good and then let's do live to earth jobs are good in 
And then obviously the other combinations, which I'll do now, but I need to put a camera down because I need to swap it all around. So I've done all the other combinations and then just to prove it's working, whilst it's still locked off, I'll just touch that side as well. So you can see, obviously it's showing a dead short because obviously I've connected the two together. So that's just proving that my meter is working. Next, we're going to be carrying out a quick R1, R2. So crocodile clip, I'll go the other side and crocodile clip that. Linked out live and earth. And then coming down here to my little test station. So obviously we want to change this onto continuity now and then confirm that the tester is, uh, what do you call it, calibrated and zeroed. So I'm just going to put the camera down, connect these together and zero the meter properly. There we go, staying at zero now. So now I can test between live and earth. So we're on the earth. Now it's gone to live and we should hear a buzzy. Buzzy, buzzy noise. Why are we not getting a buzzy, buzzy noise? Have I put them on the wrong ones? Like an absolute donut. Let's have a look. No, live and earth. Oh, I know why. Rookie error. The rotary isolator isn't turned on. So let's put this on. You will fit in there. And then, there we go. So that's on now. So that's a safety feature of rotary isolators. Obviously they can't be in the on position when the front cover's off. So jobs are good. In. So now I'm happy with the testing. Um, obviously there were just a few tests to do so I didn't damage the actual unit because obviously it's a delicate electronics inside. Now obviously I can wire it up and then get the live tests because I still need to do the board. So I've still got a bit of work inside to get the live tests available. Um, but I've carried out a few of the basic tests to start with. So now I've got to wire it up just in there so it's just need to grab the paperwork and have a look at where it needs to go but you've got nice cable gland catchers here and then cable entry there and there so the bigger one is for my cable the smaller one is for the bus cable so we'll slightly pierce them push them through and obviously naturally gravity is nothing going to come in there and then i was speaking to mitch bright spark and he made a good point of not taking them out and putting stuff in glands keep the manufactured seals as then the manufacturer might have factored in that as a breathable air point so it allows all in here to breathe a little bit obviously not let water in naturally it's physically impossible for water to get in there because it's got like a shroud which comes over and then that's bottom entry but it will allow it to be able to breathe that's us all wired up i had to use the uh, cheap little tool check plus set to get in here where the connections were so we've got the bus cable coming up here, which is this white one. Obviously this cover needs to go back on and then we need to cable tie all the slack. I've left a bit of slack so there's enough so you could pull it off and plonk it down. Um, and then regarding the uh, power cable coming from the isolator, obviously that's going in just, it's quite hard to show you, just there. And I've put like little loops so then that'll be pushed back and all contained with the cover. They're cable gripped and then they're coming through the manufactured grommets and then they're gonna be cable tied all the way down there. Sorry for twisting the camera around loads. That was just an awkward position for me to be sat in and wiring it up. Uh, that's all wired up. Obviously, that'll be pushed back in there. Everything's ferruled, everything's nice and neat, nicely done, sealed up. It's the next day, I've just popped back to the lads because they're commissioning the unit. Uh, obviously, our last clip you would have seen was it all wired up. Uh, last night, I filled out all the certificate, all the necessary tests, I retested R1 or 2 ZS, RCD trip time, all of them to this obviously isolator uh, and then I think is it on yeah I think it's on you probably can't even hear it or see it but it's spinning now the compressor inside and um, the lads are just configuring it with all the different valiant uh, heating control systems because it's been like a replumb on the whole house and then there's like a hot water tank so I'll run you upstairs and show you a bit of how we've done it upstairs so yesterday tried something new wiring up a uh, air source heat pump with John it's been very enjoyable and a great learning curve of learning a bit about the plumbing side, how air source heat pumps work. Um, it's been great really. But if you want to try something new to help your business, then check out Tradeify. Obviously I've used that day in, day out for coming up to a year. Next month would be me on my own for a year. And so far, I think I would be lost without it. Like keeping track of our like, invoices, quotes, and like giving the customers such an easy experience. So like when they send over a quote, they can just click accept. Um, it's just straightforward, simple, customer feedback's great from it and ultimately it's a great tool to enhance your business and then also save time in the evenings. So if you do want to grab it, you can use code ADAM30 to get 30% off for the first three months or you can check it out using the link in the description. I can't run you upstairs as the lads are still wiring it up and they're on the phone to Valiant to set up like commissioning it and making sure they're doing it right, obviously because this is our first one on fully like integrating the whole replumb together with it. 
So it's completely new to me and it's a little bit new to John. So he's just getting a bit of guidance and making sure he's setting it up right. So I can't really take you up there as there's other lads as well that work for John, sorting out the plumbing, putting floorboards back down. And it's very noisy. Sorry, it's been a little bit like I've been doing it and then kind of showing you after, um, but I can't really do a lot because I've been like trying to learn myself. But the next one we do, we've got one on next month. I can run you through in more detail of how we're doing it. Um, if you do any heat pumps like this or anything like systems like this abroad, let us know for tips and tricks to look out for. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.